So let's talk about some alternative topologies for a single phase rectifier. So in a normal rectifier you have uh, four diodes and you have the full bridge converter but there are other uh, examples. So one of the alternative ones are called the center tap rectifier and if you remember it from the uh, last year, third year there are also something called center tap transformer. So let me call you the schematic here. So in the center tap rectifier you have a transformer in the primary and you have the secondary of the transformer secondary windings but the secondary windings have basically a central connection and that connection is called the center tap and this transformer is called the center tap rectifier so if let's say this is a one-to-one -one, uh, transformer so you can have I don't know let's say this is 10 turns here so you have 10 turns here 5 turns here and 5 turns in the secondary part for example if you are applying 230 volts to here so that part will induce 115 volts that part will induce 115 volts but in opposite directions because you know you have the neutral is defined as the midpoint and that is why it is called the center tap so if you have that kind of uh, configuration what you can have is when whenever that voltage remember that they are 180 degrees phase shifted so whenever you have some positive cycle here whenever you have positive cycle here yes you have some positive cycle on that side and that diode will conduct on that let me draw here blue area and it will draw that blue region okay so whenever it is negative okay let's say now you are in the red area so now you have this if this is your zero point now you have positive according to that one so that diode will be in conduction but of course now it is uh, rectified because it is uh, zero volt is defined as here so now that diode will be conducting while the other one is is off so next one is vice versa so they are basically uh, getting into conduction you know in a sequence waveform but what is the advantage of that thing so can you compare it like uh, let me go back and I'll show you again like the number of diodes so in the previous case you had like four diodes and now you have just two diodes in this configuration and also you know ratings can be changed because in the previous case like two diodes were in series and they were uh, in conducting but now uh, you are just uh, connecting one diode and depending on voltage you know that can be half and cost yes you can argue maybe the extra you just reduce the number of diodes by uh, two but you have to use an extra extra transformer yes if you look that way then maybe you are you know putting some extra cost but most of the time most of the time even if you are using a uh, let me draw it here even if you are using a full bridge uh, rectifier okay like that one you don't just connect it to AC voltage most of the time you have to use a transformer anyways because let's say you have 230 volts here and um, I don't know maybe you want to have like 12, 12 volts DC on the other side so you have to use a transformer anyway so if you are using transformer anyway so why don't you just uh, use a center tap transformer and at least you can reduce the number of diodes by two anyway it depends on the application okay and for current waveform you know what about the current waveform again the current waveform directly depends on that thing and if this one is conducting yes you have the same if this is just a resistive load you have you know that waveform that waveform so it is not 
uh, much different from the full bridge rectifier. And let's see a practical case. Again, this is not only uh, specific to center top rectifier, you have the same thing for the full bridge rectifier. Uh, if you have a filtering capacitor, okay, just for there for filtering, so you can have a resistive load. So this is more similar to the case we just discussed. So it can be like a, a positive voltage source. So whenever our voltage is, I mean, this is our capacitor voltage, and this is the, that one is our source voltage. So whenever our source voltage is smaller than that thing, and th those diodes will not be in conduction, so the inductor, sorry, the capacitor will be supplying the uh, output load, so the inductor voltage is decaying. And whenever our input voltage has reached that value, so in that region C is charging, so that current is charging the capacitor and supplying the load. And again, whenever it is lower, then it just gets into the decaying. So you have, you know, that kind of characteristics voltage charging the capacitor and then decaying and charging and decaying. Sorry for my drawing. It has to be some steady state, something like that. And that is why you had, uh, you had the, myself here, so that is why, you know, in the simulations of this week assignments, you will see that kind of waveform uh, with your own simulations. Okay. So there's also another uh, topology type. It's called the voltage doubler. And I am sure you have seen that kind of uh, specifications. If you have seen a power supply, they have either 112 volts or 230 volts okay and the reason for that if that is equipment is to be used in USA or I don't know Japan you know a, a couple of other countries where there's uh, 115 volts 150 volts this equipment can be used uh, in those countries without any modifications or it can be used with countries at 230 volts so most of the time you just make a switch and you know, if you say probably it doesn't working, but it is really simple idea, but and it really works, and it doesn't really affect if you are make it like 112 volts, but I mean with some specifications, I think they have some internal protections, but it, if you don't have any internal protections, uh, there is a possibility that you will damage your circuit, and the idea is quite simple. So that is the voltage doubler circuit. So let's talk about the normal case. If you just move that thing to uh, 230 volts position, so it is not connected to anywhere, so that line is off, that line is off. So now your circuit is no different than that. So now our input is, let's say, 230 volts. And now it is the same thing as a normal bridge rectifier. So whenever our voltage is positive, it is coming through here so now our two capacitors are in series and our uh, voltage are flowing like that right and whenever it is negative so it is coming through uh, whenever it is negative sir now it is coming through here and it's coming back from D2 so it is normal uh, full bridge rectifier and what will be the output voltage? Uh, remember, 2 square root 2 divided by P times VDRMS or 0.9 uh, VS RMS, so it is 0.9 times 230 volts. Right, that is, you know, nothing uh, different here. And let's see what will happen if I just move that position, that switch position, to here which is already connected. So now it is working like that. So now let's look at the currents whenever, so now I have 112 volts, 115 volts. So now VD current is coming through here. Okay, now it is connected through that way. Okay, so now that capacitor 
you know can be charged of course depending on what you have here and in the previous case I just calculated the average voltage assuming like you have constant current here it doesn't have to be constant current but anyway so VC1 okay the peak value of VC1 will be 120 volt times square root 2 all right and whenever that voltage is negative whenever that voltage is negative so now our current is coming uh, through here okay so now it just first came in like that so whenever now it is negative so now it cannot go in that direction because in the previous cycle that voltage is already charged up to 115 square root 2 voltage so that voltage is already charged here or maybe slightly less so then the only point that it will go is that way okay it will go that way okay and in that case then I will have that voltage as 115 square root 2 of course this is the peak values not the average values okay so now I mean that is why it is called a voltage doubler circuit now I have that capacitor charged 115 square root 2 and that capacitor is charged 110 uh, 15 square root 2 and that voltage can go up to not the average voltage but it can go up to 230 square root 2 volts right so it is as if it is connected to 230 volt system so now what happens if you just use that switch at that position when you are connected to 230 volts so basically those will be charged up to 230 square root 2 and 230 square root 2 and this will go up to 460 square root 2 and if most of the modern ones have some protections but if you don't have uh, protection it will damage your power supply okay